Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? We're going to be looking at the Interlude Campaign Part 16. Has there really been 16 parts of the Interlude Campaign? <clears throat> I'm going to be looking at this, sorry I joked for a bit, and uh, going over here real quick. So that's going to be today's video. Let's go right into it. So what does this mean? What is an Interlude Campaign? Well... Uh, during an interlude campaign, the chances super suck for or double EXP acquisition or great suck, uh, depending on which kind of suck you're looking for. When you're performing servant uh, servant enhancements during the seventh campaign, servants will be doubled for a limited time. In addition, all interludes for all servants will be one half AP cost. Fulfill the requirements to unlock each interlude and take advantage of this opportunity to enjoy your favorite servant's stories. In game graphics may vary by image to image. And your story may vary by what year the unit was released in, because uh, they got better with them over time. And yeah, that's the campaign details. And some of them will have their true name hidden if you have somehow have not finished that stuff yet. But yeah, here are the new interludes coming with them. It is Ostelfo, Canis, Mandricardo, Anastasia, Salome, uh, Antonio Salieri, and Yang Gufai. For a stealthful, you need to have cleared Singularity. Again, you can only get these if you actually have these units. If you don't have these units and you somehow don't know how this is how inter interludes work, um, except for ones that will be introduced in a future where it doesn't work like that. But for these, you need to have the unit. But you need to have had, for a stealthful, you need to have cleared Singularity F and achieved Stage 2 and have a Bond of 3. And this is going to get a skill rank up, no Syncords related to it. Uh, for Canaeus, it is clear Lost Belt number 5, Olympus, achieve stage 4 Ascension, and then achieve Bond level 5, and this is another skill rank, so no St. Quartz from this one. Mandricardo is uh, clear Lost Belt 5, Atlantis, achieve stage 3 Ascension, and have a Bond of level 3, a single St. Quartz for that. Anastasia, you have to have cleared Lost Belt 3, Prologue, uh, achieve a stage 3 Ascension, and achieve Bond level 5, and you'll get a single St. Quartz for your effort. Salome is a clear the final singularity, achieve stage 4 ascension, and achieve bond level 5, and that's another 1 sand quartz. For Soliari, it is clear lost belt number 3's prologue, and achieve stage 4 ascension, and then achieve bond level 5. And this is going to be a skill rank up for him. And for Yang, it is, or Yang, I forget which way it's actually pronounced. Clear singularity F, achieve bond level 5, and, have a, and you can get a single sand quartz, easy as pie. Easy schmeasy. And yeah, like I said, double, two chance of suck and great suck. And yeah, there's also going to be a banner related to this. And the banner itself is this right here. You can have a chance of getting Anastasia or Canaeus. And, and then the on raid up is Celiari and Magicardo. Magicardo always in banners. Very easy to get to MP5. Celiari, kind of a pain in the ass to get to uh, MP5. It's actually easier if you... Summon on a GSSR that is limited to a specific cl extra class because he's basically always guaranteed to be in it <laughs> because he's the At least in I think in NA he's the only level three um, Extra class. <laughs> I don't think they have one in uh, JP just yet not that I can remember off the top of the dome at the moment and yeah Anastasia is also Always in every single banner, so she can spook you. So Kanae, this is really only a banner if you badly want Kanaeus. She's going to be the only one, the only four star featured on here, and she is story locked, so that makes her a big pain in the ass to actually get. So there you go. That's going to be the story banner here. And yeah, that's it. It's only these four. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, what about Astolfo and what about Yang? Because I also forgot Yang was here. But no, on this original banner, I could have swore Astolfo was on this. He's not on this. It's only these four. So, yeah, don't summon. <laughs> Unless you badly want Kanaeus. Uh, he'll usually be, I mean, he, she is going to be, uh, this one's a little bit tough. If you're a big fan of him, for sure, it's a pain in the ass to get story locked units. And this is not a unit that they typically like rerun a whole bunch. It's not like she's constantly getting rerun banners all the time. Uh, I actually think she, I, I have to double check on the popularity on the JP side, but it has always been my understanding that they're not the biggest fans of her. And I also, maybe I'm just thinking of NA. NA wasn't the biggest fan of her either, but that's because the way you're introduced to them in the Lost Belt is a little bit, uh, 
it's a thinker. <laughs> I, I remember th that original Lost Belt featuring Anastasia was not the greatest in terms of writing. At least that's what I thought. Maybe it's a little bit different now. Maybe things have got set up. But anyway, now I'm going into a larger tangent. But anyway, yeah, this banner is only really worth it if you care about these two story life units. Anastasia, like I said beforehand, um, there's a summer Anastasia coming up. So if you're a big fan of Anastasia, I would assume you would rather wait for that one. Because you can always get Anastasia on a free SSR ticket. Like, if you badly love Anastasia and you don't want to pick up Tamamo or Waver, then you just pick up Anastasia. It's not that hard. Maybe it's not the, in terms of meta-defiant smart pick, it's not the smartest pick. Um, but in terms of love, it's the smartest pick if it's your favorite unit. So I say go for it. Magikarta, literally, you will get him in P5 super easy. There's zero reason to summon if, who, if he's who you want. Saliari is a pain in the ass to get, like I've said beforehand. So he's kind of your best bet here. And, as I said beforehand, yeah, Story Lock Kine is kind of a pain. So, that's it. I think you're better off to just wait for Anniversary. Uh, there's really next to no reason to summon on this banner. Like, the, I think if I actually thought it out, especially with, like, Castoria just, like, coming up, this is the most oddest banner that they've ever released. And even if you take into account what other stuff are coming up, Nero Fest is also coming up pretty soon, and we're not uh, skipping it because on Taiwan they got it. So we are getting Nero Fest. <laughs> but not only Nero Fest, we're also getting... Um, yeah, we're also getting Part 3. Where is she? We're, we're getting Part 3, which is a Summoning Campaign 3, which has Lancelot and it has Percival in it. So... When you look at this banner, and you see these units, and you look at what's coming up in the future, which is another fairy knight, um, first of all, who is, is not in any way story locked, I think? Let me check. Not story locked, so he's always in it, but he's a big beefy man. What's not to love about him? And also very good, my brother just told me. And then if you also look at the other side of like, oh yeah, units that just don't get rerun very often and are actually legitimately limited, there's Brunhilde. And then there is Nero Caster, uh, Summer. And the Summer versions of units are very hard to get once their initial Summer event is over. Uh, <laughs> borderline impossible, it feels like. I've been wanting this Nero since she released, and she's the one Summer unit that has always evaded me. And she's a big pain in the ass to actually get, because she, her GSSR is filled with dudes I don't want. And then the banner she's on is always bait before bigger banners. Like, in this instance, before Anniversary and before Summer. The biggest of big baits. So yeah, take a look. Look deep inside yourself and say, Hey, do I really want to summon on this? Do I really care about these units that much? And if, you, if the answer is yes, I would still say, This is a free SSR ticket that we're going to be getting for Anniversary. Use it on that. And this is a free four-star select ticket later on down the line. Like, th there's ways around this that you can easily get them. I think the actual legitimately hardest person to get on here is Saliari. <laughs> he might actually be the hardest unit to pull on this banner. Um, which is pretty funny to think about. That does not mean he's going to be easy to get because I've chased plenty of limited three-star servants and they are not easy to get. But yeah. There you go. That's this event. It's coming up pretty soon. Uh, on the NA side, when does it start? It should st it should tell me right here. Uh, on the 15th. So basically, uh, in a day. Yeah, I'm trying to think about when I release these videos. Sometimes it's like, oh, don't really remember. But this one I do remember. It'll be a day. So think about it. I'm assuming most people are skipping though. And just if you have any of the units that get a sync course from this, enjoy the story. And that's it. And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, if you want to actually support the channel, then you can uh, follow me where I do a bunch of stuff, including Fago. Well, Fago is the main one, but then I also talk about Sean Jump stuff. And then I occasionally just upload random streams that I get. You get the whole gamut when you follow me. And yeah, keep doing that because I've been having a lot of support recently and I've been very thankful, very grateful, and it looks like I'm also going to be able to get to maybe 3,000 subscribers by end of the year, which would be kind of rad. Don't think it might actually happen, but based off of the analytics YouTube say, they're saying, hey, it's likely. So <laughs> thanks a whole bunch, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, goodbye, have a good day, peace out.